Hello students, welcome back to next lecture on Hadoop and Big Data. In today's class, we are going to discuss a new topic called Hadoop Writable Classes. Students, if you observe, in Java we have uh, uh, different primitive data types, isn't it? Like int, float, double, char, uh, long, byte, all these are the different data types supported by Java. Java supports different primitive data types and also in Java we have different wrapper classes also. For each primitive type, there is a corresponding wrapper classes present in Java. All these are the different wrapper classes supported by Java. Similarly, in Hadoop also. In Hadoop, we don't have wrapper classes like integer, float, double and all those. Instead, Hadoop has its own wrapper classes called writable classes. Here, in Java, those are wrapper classes. In Hadoop, the wrapper classes are writable classes. For each primitive type, there is a corresponding writable class available in Hadoop. Let us say if we have int, the corresponding writable class in Hadoop is int writable. If we have float, the corresponding writable class in Hadoop is float writable. Likewise, we are having different writable classes in Hadoop. This writable class will wrap the Java primitive type values and implements two interfaces. The first interface is writable comparable. The second interface is writable interface. All writable classes will should implement will implement these two right these two interfaces. Why or not? We will discuss that in the later part. And these classes are present in a package called org.apache.hadoop.io package. There is a package called org.apache.hadoop.io. In that package, all these classes are present. So, students, uh, the data, I mean, whatever the data we are speaking, that is uh, primitive type data, that data will be set into these objects, these writable classes objects, by using two special methods called set method and get method. Whenever you want to store the data into this object, you, we can use set method. In order to retrieve the data from that object, then the appropriate method to use, it, to use is get method. These two are the special methods which we can use to store and retrieve the data. Next, these writable classes, uh, whatever the writable classes we are speaking, these writable classes will hold only a single primitive value but not more than one value and these values can be set either at construction by using a constructor or by using a set method. Similarly, we can retrieve it by using the get method. And students, these, these writable classes, whatever we are uh, discussing, these writable classes uh, must and should implement two interfaces called writable comparable and writable interfaces as we discussed. Now we will see few uh, uh, primary primitive writable classes supported by Hadoop. Those are for each Java primitive data type, there is a corresponding writable class present in Java. For example, for boolean, there is a primitive data type called boolean in Java. For that, the corresponding writable class is boolean writable. There is a data type called byte in Java. The corresponding writable class for that is byte writable. Similarly, for int, we have int writable. For, uh, I mean, we don't have variable length integer data type in uh, Java. But here in Hadoop, Hadoop supports a different uh, uh, writable class called v int writable class. Variable length integer writable class. Similarly, for float, we have float writable. We do have long writable. We do have v long writable. We do have double writable and the last one is short writable. In order to store different kinds of data, we have different kinds of writable classes. In order to store boolean data true or false, we use boolean writable. In order to store integer data, which is very small in range, then we use short writable. If we want to store very big integer values, we use long writable. If we want to store real numbers, we will we'll be using either double or uh, float writable classes. Likewise, we have many writable classes present in Hadoop. Now we'll see, I mean, uh, uh, v int writable and v long writable. These two are used are, are, are used for variable length integer types and variable length long types respectively. And one more thing is, whenever we serialize this uh, uh, this this objects, uh, these writable objects, why do we serialize these objects, students? Is there any need to serialize these objects? Yes. If you observe in MapReduce programming part, whatever the data generated by the mapper and the reducer or combiner or partitioner, the data will be traversing across the network 
it is a distributed computing environment no that cluster is a distributed computing environment one node will be uh, giving data to another node meaning mapper will be giving data to reducers to combiners to partitioners likewise the data will be shared will be traversed across uh, across the network so whenever you traverse the data across the network you need to serialize the data so whenever you serialize this data this writable class objects the memory occupied by these objects will be same as the memory occupied occupied by the java primitive types for example in java int occupies 4 bytes of memory when when you serialize the int writable class object in hadoop then it takes only 4 bytes of memory but not more than that okay students understand why we are going for serialization uh, you cannot send the object directly onto the network you have to convert that into byte stream and then you have to send it across the network that is called serialization what is serialization serialization means converting the object data into a byte stream is called serialization so whenever you serialize the data the memory occupied by the by the writable objects will be same as a java primitive types that is a very biggest advantage in hadoop actually okay students fine now we'll see an example of how we are going to use this writable classes in map reduce programming at very high level i'll be showing Uh, if you observe, I have taken int writable class object and I have uh, assigned some value to that called ten thousand twenty three by using a constructor here. I didn't use set method. Similarly, I have taken one more object called short writable and I have assigned a value called ten to that object. And I have taken float writable object and I have uh, set the value into that object by using a special method called set method. If you observe this slide, I have used set method in order to set the value into that particular object. So, my double writable I have used here. If I want to retrieve the uh, data present in that object, I'll be using a method called get method. So, I have uh, uh, shown you how to use the get method also. So, this is a very high level example. In the next class, I'll be covering a very uh, detailed example of uh, covering all the writable classes in Hadoop. That I will be looking at in looking in uh, next class. For time being, we'll be covering the theoretical part. So we do have a few more writable classes in Hadoop. Apart from this primitive writable classes, we do have uh, other uh, set of writable classes. In that, the first set is array writable classes. We know what is an array. Array is a collection of homogeneous elements. So we have single dimensional array. We have two dimensional array. In order to represent single dimensional array, we do have one writable class. In order to represent two dimensional array, we do have two di uh, one more writable class. For single dimensional array, the writable class is array writable, and for two dimensional, the uh, the class is two D array writable. These two are the different classes which uh, which can be used for array type data. The only constraint in this is whatever the data we are storing into these objects should be of type writable objects, but not of type primitive types. You cannot store the primitive type data into this. Objects, but only you can store the writable object type data into these objects. That is the only constraint we need to remember when we are working with array writable classes. Understand, students? There are how many array writable classes are there? There are two uh, array writable classes are present. One for single dimensional, another for two dimensional array. For single dimensional, the class name is array writable. For two dimensional, the class name is two D array writable. Okay, fine. Now we will see one more set of writable class called map writable classes. We know what is a map. Map is a it is a it is a data structure actually, uh, which uh, which contains key value uh, pairs, collection of key and value pairs. So uh, in Hadoop there are three uh, different kinds of map writable classes or they all these classes implements map interface implemented the map interface the first one is abstract map writable this is a base class for all the map writable classes and the second one is uh, map writable this is a general purpose map writable class which maps key with the value the third one is sorted map writable a special kind of map writable class uh, uh, which implements a sorted map interface as a result all the keys present in that uh, object will be automatically sorted so how many map writable classes are there there are three map writable classes are there what are those those are abstract map writable 
map writable, sorted map writable. Abstract map writable is base class for all map writables. Map writable is a general purpose writable class which wherein we can store key and value base. And the last one is sorted map writable. It's a special kind of map writable class which again stores key and value pairs but the keys are in a sorted order. The keys, whatever the keys we have stored in that object that will be automatically sorted because it is implementing an interface called sorted map interface. So only the keys present in that sorted map will be automatically sorted. So we have seen two sets of writable classes. One is array writable class, another one is map writable classes. Now we will see a few more writable classes now. The next one is null writable class, which is a very special kind of a writable class. Whenever you want to represent any null value, then this is a suitable class to use. Whenever we want to represent null values, then null writable class is the best fit for that. Similarly, when you use this null writable, no data is read, no bytes of data are read or return to that particular type. And also, uh, whenever a map in, in map reduce programming part, whenever we don't want to use any fields, either key or value, when, 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 when we don't want to use any keys and values in that, then we can declare those keys and values as null writable. Okay, students, now we'll see a few more writable classes. Those are object writable. Next one is text. The object writable means the name itself gives us, it's, it holds any kind of data. It holds all kinds of data, either it stores integer data, real numbers, enums, arrays, strings, what any kind of data this uh, class object can store, this object writable class object can store. The next one is text. Text is similar to the strings in Java. We know strings in Java. Java supports strings. So we know Java uh, supports strings. Uh, in Java, uh, in order to represent textual data, we have uh, a string class. Similarly, in Hadoop, we want to, if you want to store any textual data, then the appropriate writable class is text. It can store up to 2 GB of data. The text class object can store up to 2 GB of data. The only difference between Java string and Hadoop text class is uh, Java strings are immutable, whereas uh, Hadoop text class is mutable class. Okay, students, there is only difference between string and text. Now, the next one is byte writable. Byte writable is a wrapper for an array of binary data. In order to store a sequence of binary data, we use byte writable class. The last one is generic writable. The name itself will tell that. It is similar to object writable, but supports only few types of data. User need to subclass this generic writable class and to, uh, need to specify the type it supports. So, that's all about it, generic writable class. So students, we have discussed many writable classes like int, float, double, long, short writables, we have discussed array writables, we have discussed map writables, we have discussed null, byte, object writable, text, all these are the different writable classes supported by Hadoop. In next class, I will be coming up with a high level example program which covers all these classes. How we are going to use these classes in MapReduce programming part, I will be explaining in the next class. Till then, have a nice day. Thank you.